Lawyers Committee started seeing in January of 2011 was all of a sudden between January and March, we saw 40 states in which voter suppression legislation was introduced. We saw some very suppressive uh, billboards that were uh, put in place by an organization, uh, funded by an organization in Ohio as well as Wisconsin. And we realized that in fact we were looking at some kind of coordinated opposition to the right to vote that was had emerged. But there was a new voter suppression. So the map of shame is a map that was developed by the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights under law, basically to cast light on the states across the country who were proposing and passing restrictive laws. Nothing's more important than voting rights because voting rights are fundamental to all other rights. If you don't like your municipal services, that's where you elect your city councilman. If you don't like the congressperson because you think they're not advocating for your issues, this is where you vote. So voting is so key, but it's one of the most threatened rights for racial minorities, students, elderly, and low-income families. Election protection really epitomizes what the Lawyers Committee is uniquely qualified to do, and that is mobilize the private bar on issues of civil rights. I've had a chance to go to some of the law firms and just to see this whole organization, uh, all, everybody on the phone and being coordinated and committed to protecting the right to vote, that's very, very impressive to me. There's a, there's a sense within the firm that this is an extraordinarily rewarding thing to do. And, Having been on the phone myself with voters quite a few times and answering their questions, I know what it feels like to be a nonpartisan individual helping individuals go to the polls. And if you talk about voting as a fundamental right, it's very important to have a system in which your race doesn't have an effect on your ability to vote and your ability to elect candidates of choice. This nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds. It was founded on the principle that all men are created equal and that the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. He gives a speech to the nation talking about how critical it is to resolve our problems in the courts and not in the streets. The very next day, Megger Evers is shot dead, assassinated as he comes home from a voting rights rally, a voter registration rally. That gives special impetus to the creation of the Lawyers Committee. And they go and they look for, you know, who are the best 250 lawyers, and they issue the invitations. And sure enough, on June 21st, in the East Room of the White House, 244 of those lawyers show up. It started us out on, on the path that uh, gave President Kennedy the, the reputation that he wanted uh, everybody to know that we, we had to take steps on this and we couldn't wait for the Congress. It was a call to action uh, of a profession that hadn't yet consciously accepted an obligation to participate in the struggle for equal justice. And this was an awakening and uh, the Lawyers Committee is the result. If it hadn't been for the Lawyers Committee, I don't know what would have happened to America. You have saved America. You have redeemed the soul of America. The key thing is to keep evolving, to keep looking at where the problems are, and to think about what is it that the Lawyers Committee can do? What is it that the legal profession can do to break down these barriers? We are not just an organization that works in isolation, that we team up and we utilize the resources and the pro bono skills of many disciplines. There's community development project, there's fair housing, fair lending project, employment discrimination project, educational opportunities project, voting rights project, and then two projects that work with all those units, the public policy project and the legal mobilization project. And in the near future, you may see others. For example, immigrant rights, and criminal justice are two that we're making moves as developing it as new projects. The Lawyers Committee is unique amongst most national 
um, public interest legal organizations in that we use volunteer lawyers on everything that we do. In 2012, we had over $43 million of pro bono services donated to our clients in the Lawyers Committee. As Dr. Keene said, we are inextricably woven in a common fabric of destiny. And we cannot believe that if my group does well, then that's all that matters. And it is that belief, it is that concept of equality for all that just drives what we do as the Lawyers Committee. It's so important that the Lawyers Committee keeps regenerating that for younger lawyers who say, I believe and I know we can be a just society. My biggest pro bono case has been working with the Lawyers Committee on um, loan modification scam prevention. I thought that I might be a good person for the team given that I used to live in Florida and I actually practiced in Florida for a little while. Think about really the work that I'm doing and, and the hardships that my parents and that these workers face and it really puts things in perspective for me. It's actually a privilege for me to be doing this kind of work and so that, that keeps me going. Every law student wants to be a part of uh, social justice, civil rights, and this organization, the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, allows for practitioners and students to continue to give back to the community and to support the justice system. So I think that it's just probably inherent in being someone who goes to law school. I really, I really feel like public interest work is at the crux of you know, our American ideals of social mobility and equality, so I hope that looking back I will have been able to have played a strong part in defending those rights of, of the marginalized and the poor and to really be a strong advocate for public interest. We know that the challenges are going to be really hard for the decades to come, but we also do believe that the arc of the moral universe bends towards justice, and we do believe that there's a time in our society when people will say, but for a few really hard hits, that this society has really moved towards justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time. I am moving America toward justice. 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 To make justice a reality for all of God's children. I am moving America toward justice.